All right, y'all, what's up? I'm back with another message for y'all. And the title of the message that I'm gonna bring today is Test God, with question mark at the end. Um, basically, I want this message to, be, message to be short and sweet. And basically the gist of this message is to like, should we test God or not? That's why, the, that's why this title has this message. It's like, yo, should we test? Or should we not test God? Cause I'm pretty sure some of us have been in church and heard like, yo, we ought to put God to the test. But at the same time, we've heard that you shouldn't test God. So which one is it? Like, should we test God or should we not test God? Is God to be tested or God not to be tested? So I'm going to say a quick prayer, then I'm going to get into the scripture. So definitely, Father, Lord God, I come before you today, Lord God, just praying for the person that's on the other end of this video, Lord God, that you would just give them wisdom and revelation about you, that you would just test their hearts, allow their hearts to be filled with love, joy, peace, allow them to have patience in their life, Lord God. But most of all, Lord Jesus, I pray that they have you in their life, that you would just reveal yourself to them, where they will have a heart to seek you and you alone, because you are the source of our strength and the source of our life. So we just thank you for who you are, who you always have been. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. All right, so I'm going to read Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. And this is what it says. And I'm going to read the New Living Translation, NLT version of this scripture. And it says this, bring all tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says, uh, says the Lord of heaven's army, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to make, to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. So clearly right there, you see that God is basically saying, yo, put me to the test. Try me and see. The scriptures literally says that. So y'all probably thinking, all right, that's the answer to the question. Yes, we are supposed to test God. But let's read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. And I'm going to read the NLT verse in this scripture as well. And it says, you must not test the Lord your God as you did when you complained at Massa. I probably pronounced that word wrong, but hey, we gonna live. Um, so clearly right there, it says we should not test God. So y'all probably like, ah, oh, the Bible contradicts itself. So the Bible is fake and is not real and we shouldn't believe the Bible. Psych. Uh, I, I, I want y'all to notice something in the two scriptures, right? And I want y'all to notice in the scripture where it says not to test God. And it says, um, it says you must not test God as you did when you complained at Massa. So when you read in Deuteronomy 6, 16, where it says not to test God, notice the emotions, the motivated, the motivation for them testing God. They were complaining. So they were testing God out of complaint. So they mean they were testing God out of a lack of faith. They were testing God out of a negative bratty attitude, you know, and just peep the tone in Malachi chapter three, verse 10, where it says, <clears throat> I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. And basically, um, in Malachi chapter three, verse 10, God is saying like, yo, bring me your tithes. Bring, bring me what you have. And when you bring me what you have in good faith, when you put me to the test in good faith, when you, the Bible says, God loves a cheer, a cheerful giver. So when you come to the Lord cheerfully and you test God cheerfully, that's how God wants you to test him. So whenever you test God in good faith, that's how he wants you to test him. But when you come to God in a lack of faith and test him in that manner, he doesn't want you to test him like that. And just think about it from your perspective. If someone came up to you and was like, yo, I don't think you could do this. You can't do this. And they're trying to test you, but they got like a little snub, snubby attitude where they're like, I don't think you could do it. You could try, do it. I don't think you could do it. You're gonna feel like, man, stop playing with me, bro. But if someone come up to you like, yo, man, I believe in you. I trust in you. You could do it, go do it. I believe in you, go do it. 
they, they, it's like they coming up to you with a positive attitude, right? So that's the thing. When you put God to the test, you got to be like, God, I trust you. I believe in you. I know it's hard to understand. I know it's hard to comprehend. I probably can't see it. It's probably hard for me to believe. But God, I'm trusting in you. And I, I'm, I'm just putting you to the test, God. Do your thing. That's how we're supposed to test God. You're not supposed to disrespectfully like try to test God. I'm like, God. I don't believe that you real. God, you fake. I don't, uh, God, yeah. and it's like, try to do this, God. I don't think you can. And it's like, you, you plan you plan on God top. You, you plan, like, it's almost like you're spitting in his face. Like, it's extremely disrespectful. And even when you read in Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, and I'm going to read the King James Version of this, where Jesus said, uh, Jesus said unto him, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And the reason why Jesus said this was because Satan was trying to put Jesus to the test. He was trying to put God to the test because Satan was sarcastically tempting Jesus. Satan was like, yo, if you're God, do this. Yo, if you did this, do this. It's almost like, I didn't say almost, Satan was taking an attack on God's identity by testing him. So when you test God, you don't take a jab at God's identity. God, if you really God, you would send me a $500,000 blessing. Man, you don't you don't test God. You don't take a jab at his identity. You don't try to test God by trying to tear God, tear down God's identity. You take you you test God by edifying and affirming God's identity by saying, God, you are Lord thy God. God, you are great, you are mighty, you are more than worthy to be praised. And since I know and I believe that you are God, God, I'm trusting you and I'm putting you to the test because I know that you are capable and you are more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly. See, that's how you test God in good faith. You don't test God in bad faith. You don't test God sarcastically. You don't test God trying to play on his identity, trying to play on his very existence in who he is. So basically, should we test God? The answer is really yes, but it's how you test God. When you test God, you got to make sure your motives in testing God. And you got to understand God is not a genie in a bottle. So don't try to test God to make him do tricks just because you want him to. Like God... If you're real, God, I trust and I believe in you and I want you to do this, that, that, and the third. And it's like, look, man, God don't got time for no gimmicks. You know what I'm saying? Um, but like, yeah, so it's really important that you honor God and talk to him in a respectable, in, in a respectable manner. Talk to God the same way you want to be talked to. You want somebody to talk to you sarcastically and tear down and try to tear down your image and, and make you, you know, like touch your identity. Like, no, so don't don't speak to God like that. Don't test God like that. So that's how you uh, that's how you test God and good character and good faith. So I hope this message was a blessing to you. I hope this message brought understanding to you. And I really hope this message helped you to elevate your relationship with God on how to talk to the Lord and, you know, how to test God. Peace. Love you all.